What's up guys, my name is Mark Steiner and today we're going to be looking into what's in my camera bag 2020 edition. Let's get right into it. So I kind of want to divide this up into two parts, what I usually take on photo shoots and what I usually take on longer trips slash video shoots. So let's start off with the thing that contains all my gear, the bag. This is the Peak Design 30L. This is the first generation product and I still love this thing to death. It does everything I need it to and this thing is just a beast. I've been taking it halfway around the world. I've now had it for two years. This thing has been through it all and it keeps going on. You can't even tell that it's been two years. This thing looks like it did the day I got it straight out of the box. It looks great. Like I've had seagulls poop on this. I've had this on waterfalls in Bali. This thing keeps up and it's impressive. The next thing I wanna talk about, one of the most important things in my gear bag is the camera itself and I'm still rocking the Sony a7R 3 This has been my go-to camera ever since it came out in December 2017 and it has never let me down. I love this thing, this thing keeps trooping on and even though the a7R 4 is out now, I don't really feel the need to upgrade and if slash when this one ever dies, I'll probably just get another R3 because I don't really need all the new megapixels in the new one and the other features are not that much of an upgrade and the fact that the price is now only 2500 makes this a very viable camera even in 2020 and beyond because this thing is just absolutely insane both for photo and video less so for video now in 2020 and looking towards the future what's going to be coming out soon but it still is more than enough for what most people need. Next thing in the bag is the Sigma 35mm 1.4. This is my go-to lens. This is what you're viewing me through right now. And I love this lens, both for photo and video, but more so for photo because the AF for video is not great. I have a whole bunch of videos on this lens if you wanna check those out. But I like this lens a lot for photography and that 1.4 is just, mm, it's so creamy. Like I, that's why I keep coming back to this lens because it just, it looks so good. And for stationary shots like this where I'm not doing crazy tracking, I love how it looks in the studio as well. So for slower video stuff, it works very well and I'm very pleased with this. I love this, especially when I started getting into wider portraits with a different kind of perspective. This lens was great and I didn't really think I needed any other lenses aside from this one and the next lens I'm going to be talking about, which is, my 85 1.8. I absolutely love this lens. This is the first lens I ever bought for the Sony system because I'm a portrait photographer, first and foremost, and I absolutely love how this lens looks. It makes everything look cinematic. And I know that word is overused beyond compare, but you point this thing in any direction and the blur is just like, that looks pro. You show that to any client and they're like, dang, that looks good. You show that to any random person on the street, they're like, wow. That looks like a cinema. Like, it just looks so good. And I love that 85 focal length. It's just so flattering. It's so true to life. And the blur you get, even at 1.8, is just beautiful. And the, the focus is fast. It's sharp. I have no complaints whatsoever about this lens. One of my favorite lenses of all time. Would highly recommend, if you don't own an 85 or you've been in the market for one, to check out the Sony 8518 you will not be disappointed. The most recent addition to my camera bag is actually the Sony 20mm 1.8G. I have a couple of videos out about this. I have a review and a photo shoot, so if you wanna check that out, that's cool. The reason why I picked this lens up is because I sold my 28mm and I got this one to replace it, and I really like the 20mm look, especially for vlogging and for video, but now that I'm dabbling in even wider portraits and more landscapes and I wanna get into astrophotography and just more like wide angle stuff, I thought that this lens was the perfect lens for me to do that. And honestly, I don't really see me needing to get any other lens soon by any means because I was looking at a couple wide angle lenses like the, the Tamron as well as the Sony 16 to 35 G Master, even though it's a little bit pricey, but this lens for me does it all and it looks great and it's 1.8 in a small package. Absolutely love this lens. Check out my full review if you want the full review on that. It's great, absolutely love it. Next thing in the camera bag, we're still rocking the Rode VideoMic Pro. I got this thing before I even bought this camera when I was still using my Nikon D3300. This thing it is like, I bought it in 2016 and it's still going strong. I think I've used maybe three batteries in that amount of time 
And that's kind of crazy that the batteries last that long for as much use I get out of this. So that's great. Sound quality is still great. Build quality has lived up to the hype. This thing, you buy it once and you're not going to need a new mic for a very long time. So very good purchase on that. And that's the beautiful thing about buying high quality gear right off the bat is that you have that peace of mind knowing it's going to last you years into the future. This next thing is not that interesting, but you got to power the whole setup somehow. And these, I have three Z batteries because they just, they power my A7R 3 and I have the battery grip so I can hold two at a time. And I just love that because it extends the battery life even further, even though these batteries are great on their own, just doubling up gives you that peace of mind knowing that you're never really going to run out on a shoot. I think the only time I ever came close to running two batteries out was when I was shooting a wedding for like 12 hours and I was mixing both like 4k 120 and photos into that and I had another battery that was fully charged. So the fact that I didn't even drain two batteries on that much shooting, pretty impressive. So these batteries are great, but it never hurts to have a couple extra because you never know what you're gonna run into. Powering this whole shindig on the post-production side of things, we have the 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro and you're probably getting some glare off this light right now, <laughs> but I finally decided to get a new computer and I have been waiting for a computer to come out for a very long time and Apple had been dropping the ball a lot recently, so for the first time ever, I was looking at PCs and I was seeing, should I get a laptop, should I get a desktop? And then Apple announced this, and I was like, ooh, this might be the one. And I waited, I didn't pre-order like the 2018 and return it five days later, because it was absolute trash. But all the reviews were good, and I was excited. So I got this one, and I've never looked back. This is exactly the device I needed, and it does everything I need it to in a small, compact package, and I can take it with me anywhere in the world. So that makes it a super awesome mobile command center, and I greatly appreciate having that in my life because it allows me to create the content I love anywhere in the world. And because I bought that new laptop, that's a USB-C only laptop, of course, you know, I had to buy an adapter for all of my peripherals that aren't USB-C. So that's kind of a pain that I now have to lug this everywhere with me if I want to do any work whatsoever. Sure, if you just have a USB-C hard drive, you can get away with not having one of these, but the fact that it doesn't have an SD card slot, kind of a deal breaker, and not all of my hard drives are USB-C. So because of that, I picked up this Satechi USB-C hub and I just needed something that allowed me to plug in everything I used to be able to plug into my old computer. And for the price of $30, this thing did that. I wish it was metal, it's plastic, but it looks metal, but it's plastic. But again, for the price, can't really complain. It comes with a micro SD, normal SD, and three USB ports. So does pretty much everything I need it to, but it sucks I now have to carry along this dongle to attach everything else I could usually attach to my old computer. Speaking of USB-C hard drives, this thing is awesome. I made a whole video on this. This is the brand new Samsung T7 Touch, and this thing has a fingerprint sensor and awesome read-write speeds and it's the size of a credit card. That's mind blowing that something this small can be a terabyte and is that fast, like that makes my life so much easier. So what I've been doing is transferring everything to this hard drive and then editing off of it because of its super fast speeds and then transferring everything else onto my bigger, slower hard drive just for storage purposes. So this thing is great when traveling because it's so small and you can just shove it in your pocket or shove it in your bag and not worry about it. And this thing is super durable because it's completely metal and just the added fingerprint sensor for safety. And that's awesome. I love having that security built into it. At first I wasn't a fan. I was like, oh, this extra added security is just a pain. But now I really do appreciate it. So this thing is awesome. Hard drives, you can never have too many of them. Speaking of hard drives, this is the Western Digital four terabyte hard drive. I think this is my second or third one of these. And these things are great for the price. You pay like a hundred bucks and you get four terabytes. Speeds aren't great, but when you have it paired with an awesome SSD that's blazing fast, speed is kind of a moot point. So this is purely for storage now. I'm not doing any editing off of this. This is just storing all my files and having backups. So this thing is great. I can't argue with ha paying $100 for four terabytes. That makes my life much easier. Going back to some camera gear, this is the Hoya 67 millimeter filter thread. And now all of my lenses are 67 millimeters. So this thing is great because it can work on all three of my lenses and it does pretty much everything I need it to do. It's a variable ND, so I just twist it and my image gets darker. So it's very useful out in the field when I can't control my light and I'm just like, all right, I need to get the correct exposure while shooting at the correct shutter speed does what it needs to do. And for me, I found this uh, when I first got the a7R 3 actually a couple months later because I wasn't doing that much video when I first got it. But 
This thing is great because it allows me to shoot in daylight and I can get clean shots out of it. So that's what's important to me is getting the correct exposure when I have no control. This thing does it. I think I picked it up for like 60 to $80, maybe a hundred bucks. But yeah, you need an ND filter in your life if you're shooting video, simple as that. Next up is this five in one reflector. Shout out my friend Brittany for getting it for my birthday. Greatly appreciate you. This thing has been a lifesaver in so many situations. I don't have a flash cause I don't like that flash look. I've not been a fan of it for a very long time, but with a reflector, you get that natural light bounce and it just lights up your subject so well. And I've had many people come up to me and be like, Oh, what flash did you use? I'm like, no, 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 that's actually a reflector. And they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, it looks great and it's natural light. So, oh, I love it. It's so useful. And the fact that it's a five in one, it's very versatile. I pretty much only use the white side of it because I like that more natural bounce. I've occasionally used the silver. I think maybe once used the gold side, but I like that white side for that natural clean look. Really, really like it. It just looks so clean. And so many people were like, man, I'm not gonna buy a flash now because that's like 15, 20 bucks and it looks better than what I wanted. I'm like, I know, that's exactly why I wanted a reflector. Reflectors are where it's at. I'm gonna be doing a whole video on that later on, but mm, yeah, I take reflectors over flash any day. So that's pretty much what I bring with me on regular photo shoots. I don't do anything too crazy. I have my three lenses. I have my setup in case I need to do some quick vlogging and I have my editing suite but when I'm traveling and I'm doing more video work, these are the other things I bring in my camera bag. This is the Ronin SC gimbal and I absolutely love this thing. When they announced it back in July, I was actually in Paris when they announced it. And when I saw it, it was available. I pre-ordered it instantly. And when I arrived back in the US, it was waiting for me and I was so excited. I finally owned a gimbal. The reason why I finally decided to get a gimbal was because it was just holding me back with client work. I was finding on certain client shoots, I was like, man, I just, I really need a gimbal to one, feel confident about this shoot and two, Two, I know what their expectations are and I can't deliver that handheld right now. So I just felt really bad when I was delivering footage that could have used a gimbal and I couldn't because I didn't own one. But most of my footage, especially on YouTube, is handheld. I very rarely use a gimbal unless it's a longer tracking shot in which it's very obvious I'm using a gimbal. But for the most part, especially all the B-roll in this room, shot handheld. And I love that handheld look. I just have more control over it. I like being that part of that, you know, like I like that. But for certain shots, especially more client work, I needed a gimbal and the Ronin SC fit the bill, especially for my small and light setup. In hindsight, a couple months after I bought this, Jiayun came out with a Weeble S and that actually has stronger motors and can take heavier setups. So if you're looking for a gimbal and you have something larger than let's say like an 85 or a 20 mil on your camera and you have a, like a heavier setup, the SC is not gonna take it. So. If you want that heavier setup, I'd look at the Weeble S or the Big Brother Ronin S because that's going to take care of all your needs. But for me, I really like the small and light setup and the biggest feature for me, aside it from being small and light, is that the axes, axes now lock and that makes it so much easier for transportation. I no longer need to bring the foam box it came in to protect it. I just throw it in my camera bag and nothing really flails around so it's great. So I can take it anywhere with me and that saves me carry on space which is really good when traveling. Also when I've been traveling I've been trying to bring my film camera everywhere so I have one roll of film in here that I've been working on for about a year. I have six shots left until this, this roll of film is done. So I'm looking forward to finishing that out in the next couple of months. And then I'll have memories from an entire year. But this is the Canon AE-1 program with a 50 mil 1.8. Love this thing, this is great. And I'm excited to dabble more in film, but it's expensive. So I'm not doing as much because every time I develop a roll of film, I could get a new SD card that takes millions of photos before it dies. <laughs> But yeah, this thing is cool and I love that vintage feel. So experimenting with film is cool. This little light, ooh, whoa, 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 is great. This is a little Manfrotto light. I picked this up. I think it's a hundred dollars or so. Not necessarily the best thing on the market anymore. The Aperture MC exists. So I'd highly recommend that over this, but it's always handy to have a little light out in the field. You never know when you're going to need it. So I bring this along with me when I'm traveling because it's helpful in certain situations. The other thing I'm bringing out with me when I'm traveling or on video shoots is my new audio setup that you're hearing me through right now, which is the Deity s Mic 2S and the HDTX. And this I'm going to be doing a whole separate video on because I'm so excited to share 
this new audio setup with you. But with that, it's going to be my go-to, like everything mic. And I've started a podcast, also might be doing a video on that. Check out the podcast in the link down below. It's cool. We're doing cool stuff with the podcast. Shout out being in quarantine for forcing me to be more creative and doing stuff I've wanted to do for the past three years. So good for that. And the reason why I picked this up is because I was getting booked for a lot of client interviews and I found that my audio equipment was just not cutting it. And I was like, you know what? This is another confidence thing. I just need to deliver a high quality product to the client and it'll pay itself back within one or two interviews. So this is a purchase I'm just gonna buy and I'm going to have it for years to come because I know the quality on this thing is great. Whole separate video, but this thing is awesome and I love how versatile it is. And it's the perfect indoor shotgun mic because of its short build. And that means that it's not going to pick up all those bounces that you have on longer shotgun mics. And because practically everything I'm filming with this mic is going to be indoors, that's perfect for me. Also, I picked up this little mic stand. This thing is great. I'm going to be using this. I just throw it in my bag whenever I'm traveling for when I want to just put this mic down and talk into it. So having this is super helpful. I really like this thing. It's just one of those things you spend like 10 bucks on and you're like, wow, this little purchase made my life that much easier. And it's just the little things, you know, like it's nothing fancy, but now I can just podcast in Switzerland, if I so wish. On the topic of audio, these are the ATH M50Xs. These are practically legendary. Everyone knows about these, and these are just, I use them for everything. I use them on planes, I use them to listen to music, and more importantly now, I use them to monitor my audio, both while recording and while editing and post-processing. These headphones are absolutely amazing. They're very flat, so that means they're very accurate, and they look great, they're comfortable. I can wear them for hours on end without being in pain, and it means that I can edit everything very accurately and quickly, and that makes my life so much easier easier. Great all around headphones. Highly recommend. The next thing in my bag is the first gen AirPods. I never thought a small piece of tech like this would be so helpful in my life. I just travel everywhere with these now. They're in my pocket and just the fact that they're wireless and they fit in this tiny case. So convenient. I never would have thought it, but AirPods are one of the most helpful things in my life right now so convenient. This is a little Swiss Army knife. This is not my favorite Swiss Army knife, but this is the one I keep in my bag at all times, just because you never know when you're going to need a Swiss Army knife. That's the whole point of it. It does everything you need it to, and then some. I don't know. I'm part Swiss, so I like having this. It reminds me of my Swiss heritage, and it just looks cool. Look at that. It's red, and I can just whip it out and do everything I need to do. If I need to change some camera equipment, this is there for me. But yeah, I think this is awesome. I'd love to hear what your favorite piece of gear was. Let me know in the comment section down below. I'm always intrigued to see which gear people gravitate towards because I'm just nerdy like that. I'd love to hear what you think about the gear. Also, if you're thinking about buying any of the gear that I mentioned, feel free to use the Amazon links in the description down below. It really does help out the channel, so I greatly appreciate that if you do. You're the real MVP. I'd also love to know your thoughts on these what's in my camera bag videos because I love making them and I haven't made them in a hot second and I always love watching other people's what's in my camera bag videos because it's just so cool looking at all the different gear out there and being like, oh, I could add that to my camera bag and that would make my life so much easier. So I would love your opinion on that. My name has been Mark Steiner and I'll see you next time.